Germany, 1978. A 27-year-old American by the name of Kenny Roberts grips the accelerators of his Yamaha motorcycle. His padded jumpsuit and visored helmet hide the sweat running down his body. Before him is the infamous Nürburgring racetrack, over 14 miles long. It's known for its sharp turns and unpredictable weather. The track had come to be known as the Green Hell. Kenny looks to the opponents at his side. All of them are skilled motorcyclists, but there's one that stands head and shoulders above the rest. Barry Sheen, a British motorcyclist with his eyes on the greatest prize of all, the World Championship Trophy. It's Kenny's all-time dream to become the first ever American to claim the prize. But there's just one man standing in his way. Kenny takes a deep breath and looks ahead. He revs his engine and watches with bated breath as the lights turn from red to yellow. Finally, they turn green, and Kenny sets off on a race that would live on forever in motorcycling history. Kenny Roberts was born in 1951 in California to Alice and Buster Roberts, two modest farmers who'd set up on the outskirts of Modesto. Growing up, Kenny loved riding. At the time, it wasn't motorcycles that had captured his attention, but horses. He loved saddling up on the farm and trotting around on the back of a pony. All that changed once he turned 12. One day, Kenny and his friend were hanging out when they spotted a dirt bike on the side of the road. His friend laughed and dared him over and over to hop on and drive off. Kenny, never one to back down from a challenge, worked up the courage and hopped on the seat. Kenny was used to the saddle and reins of a horse. The motorbike was a whole other beast. When he turned on the engine, the roar sent a chill down his spine, and the thrum made the whole thing feel like it was alive. Kenny pushed back the kickstand and sped off. The sheer speed of the bike made his heart race. He finished a quick lap and got off the bike, his hands shaking with excitement. It was the best Kenny had ever felt. From that day forward, Kenny was utterly obsessed with motorbikes. He said, I never thought of doing anything else. I worked in a shop at 14 just to be around motorcycles. He dropped out of high school to focus on his hobby talked the ear off anyone who was close enough to listen, and spent his evenings building his own makeshift motorbike by strapping his dad's spare lawnmower engine to a bicycle. Kenny's dad soon grew tired of his spare parts being taken from the house for his son's motorcycle. So he decided to buy him his very first proper bike, a Tohatsu. It was a solid, reliable bike of Japanese make, good for any first-timer. But Kenny was more than just a motorcycle enthusiast. He had also been born with the indomitable spirit of a champion. He loved to compete and wanted to be the very best at everything he did. Naturally, Kenny entered a number of dirt track racing competitions to push himself to a new level. Just as Picasso couldn't have painted the Sistine Chapel without a paintbrush, Kenny couldn't compete on a bike that wasn't up to scratch. Though his parents had been hesitant at the start, they saw their son's passion, determination, and skill. They bought him a brand new Hodaka bike and sent him on his way. The investment paid off. Now able to compete with his opposition, Kenny quickly started cleaning up, winning a number of local dirt races. Motorcyclists all across California soon started speaking of the young whiz kid. Unbeknownst to Kenny, Someone very important was watching at the same time, Bud Axlin, a local dealer for Suzuki. Bud offered Kenny a sponsorship deal with Suzuki, providing him with a top-of-the-range bike. Kenny accepted without a second thought, and just one day after his 18th birthday, he entered his first professional race at Cow Palace. It was the first step on the road to eternal glory. Kenny finished that race in fourth place, a very respectable finish for such a young rider, considering it was his first ever professional appearance. Bud watched on and realized that he'd been wrong when he first assessed Kenny. The young man didn't just have the potential to be good, he had the medal to become the very best. But Bud was just a local dealer. 
he didn't have the knowledge to teach Kenny the skills he needed. Instead, Bud introduced the young star to Jim Doyle, a motorcycling coach and manager. Kenny and Jim formed a strong friendship, so Jim approached Triumph, a titan of the motorcycling world, on his protege's behalf for a potential sponsorship. Triumph said, no, he's too small for one of our bikes, they told Jim. They would later realize this was one of the greatest missed opportunities of all time. Jim turned to Yamaha, a respectable but hardly top-class professional motorcycling manufacturer. Yamaha agreed to sponsor Kenny, and while their bikes weren't the best in show, the company offered him something invaluable, Kel Carruther. Carruther was a former world champion in the 250cc category, and his advice proved instrumental in shaping Kenny into the man he'd later become. With a new bike in his hands and a wise mentor looking over his shoulder, Kenny was ready to take on the world. His first challenge was far from an easy one, the AMA Grand National Championship. This championship involved duking it out with the best in the country on four separate dirt tracks. Considering it was only his second ever race, nobody expected much from Kenny. Worse still, he was up against the infamously powerful Harley-Davidson team, whose bikes far outclassed his Yamaha on dirt tracks. The odds simply weren't in Kenny's favor. Telling a man like Kenny that something was impossible was the best way of seeing it done. Despite his inexperience and his inferior equipment, Kenny never gave up. He drove on, powered by the sheer force of his determination. The first race of the Grand National Championship came to an end. Sitting right at the top of the leaderboard was, to everyone's shock, Kenny Roberts. Kenny continued to impress in the final three races. At the end of the championship, he placed a very respectable fourth in the entire country and was named AMA's Rookie of the Year. But to Kenny, fourth might as well have been last. He wanted that first place. So, Kenny watched some of the very best compete in the 350cc World Championship to learn their techniques. He took notice of one rider in particular, Jarno Saarinen, one of the best on the planet during his time. Kenny noticed how Saarinen leaned in deep when he took a turn, nearly scraping his knee against the road to maximize stability. Kenny adopted the technique, but in his typical fashion, took it one step further. He leaned so far into the turn that he actually scraped his knee against the road, tearing into his jumpsuit fabric. The new technique gave him a huge edge and became Kenny's signature move. Soon, he'd taken to tarmac road racing as well as dirt tracks. But Kenny wasn't one to leave things unfinished. In his second season in 1972, he returned to the Grand National Championship, squaring up against the Harley-Davidson team that had beaten him the first time around. It wasn't hard for those watching to guess who would win. Kenny dominated the competition this time around, flying round bends at breakneck speed. He became the best rider in the country and held the trophy up high. There was just one last hurdle for Kenny to clear. When it came to motorcycle racing, Europe was a whole other beast than America back in the 1970s. Road racing was considered the most prestigious of all forms of racing, and only the best of the best emerged from European competitions with silverware in hand. When many of the European giants saw that some American dirt track racer was competing alongside men with years and years of experience, they laughed. Many wouldn't even bother talking to Kenny. The fans were the complete opposite, however. When Kenny arrived in Italy to compete in the Imola 200, a 750cc race, he felt humbled by the Italian fans' warm reception. The spectators were amazed to see this unknown American pull off stunts they'd never thought possible, such as sliding his rear tire. Though he failed to come in first in his race against the world champion Giacomo Agostini, many flocked to the races to see who they called the Martian whizzing around the track. Of all the European competitions, there was one that all professionals dreamed of winning, the Grand Prix 500cc World Championship. Whoever won that was the undisputed king of motorcycling for the season. 
No American had yet won the tournament by 1978, the year Roberts managed to compete. He'd won trophies such as the Daytona 200 in the 200cc and 350cc categories, but there was still that last honor, the greatest one of them all, that eluded him. Once again, Kenny faced what seemed like insurmountable odds, but he'd overcome such odds in the past, so the star racer figured he could do so again without issue. Kenny was quickly humbled. In the opening Venezuelan Grand Prix, he faced off against some of the greatest in the world, including title-chasing Brit Barry Sheen, a two-time world champion for Suzuki. The light turned green, but Kenny's engine faltered. A mechanical failure caused his bike to fail, and he was forced to retire from the race, much to his immense frustration. Sheen claimed victory in the race and put himself in a dominant position for the rest of the season. Kenny could do nothing but fly to Spain for the second round and hope for better luck. His luck only worsened, however. The governing body of the Spanish Grand Prix tried to deny him entry to the 500cc race on a mere technicality. Kenny was outraged and felt the organizers were trying to keep an American out of the sport. After much back and forth, he was finally allowed to take part. Fueled by rage, Kenny got off to a roaring start. He flew across the track, setting a lap record. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to keep up the momentum and finished second behind Pat Hennen. In Austria, things started to turn. Kenny won his very first Grand Prix, finishing ahead of Johnny Ciccato and Barry Sheen. It was a moment of triumph, but Kenny knew his job wasn't done yet. He kept up the pace by winning in Italy and France, then finishing second in the Netherlands and Belgium. Kenny was top of the pile, and by quite a stretch. Despite his rocky start, he'd beaten the odds and looked like the clear favorite to win the whole championship. Then, something terrible happened. While warming up for the race in Sweden, Kenny crashed and suffered both a concussion and a bad injury to his thumb. The accident knocked his confidence. He only managed to finish seventh in the Swedish Grand Prix while his main rival Sheen took home the first place trophy. Things only got worse at the Finnish Grand Prix, where Kenny picked up no points at all. He made just one simple mistake, but that was enough for the world-class Sheen to capitalize. Soon, Kenny found himself only three points ahead of Sheen, who was in tremendous form. The nerves were getting to him. The British Grand Prix was next. The rain was pouring down in sheets. Despite the blinding conditions, Kenny managed to fend off his pursuer just enough to finish first. The two then flew to Germany, where the title would be decided. The world watched on with bated breath as the 500cc riders took their positions. All Kenny needed to do was finish ahead of Sheen, and he'd become the world champion. But how could he? The odds were completely against him. The competition organizers had tried to stop him. He'd been humbled by the world's greatest and had suffered a debilitating injury only a few months prior. The pressure of eight long years of fierce competition and dreams rested on Kenny's shoulders. There were only two paths forward, lose and head back to America with his head in his hands, or win. Put aside all the doubts, all the hardships he'd been through, and race like he'd never raced before. The starting light turned green. Only 8 minutes, 31 seconds, and 700 milliseconds later, the German Grand Prix was over. Kenny did it. He finished third, just ahead of Sheen with the Italian Virginio Ferrari winning the Grand Prix itself. But Kenny didn't care about this one singular race. In a moment that would be remembered as one of the greatest moments in his country's sporting history, Kenny was awarded the ultimate prize and crowned the official 1978 Grand Prix World Champion, the very first American to ever do so. The star would forever be known as King Kenny. But Kenny did more than just win grand prizes. He inspired an entire generation of American riders to compete. Yamaha was ecstatic with his performances and gave him free reign to form the Yamaha Team Roberts racing team in the 1980s. Kenny wanted to give back to the community that had fostered his growth and even tutored the famous Steady Eddie to multiple championship titles. Every American champion in the sport 
owes their success to Kenny. In more ways than one, Kenny Roberts is the face and pride of American motorcycle racing.